Amen, amen. Living for legacy. Living for legacy. I love this particular passage. I love this scripture. Very familiar passage of scripture. I love it uh, because in it, Jesus says, my desire, my heart is that you bear fruit. He wants you to bear fruit. This is the Christian life. This is a picture of the Christian walk. Jesus wants you to bear fruit. Fruit. What does it mean to bear fruit? It means to bring forth, to give birth, to produce. That everyone in this room, the desire of God for your life is that you become a producer, that you produce something, that you create something, that you that you that you get involved with something, that that you dream something in the earth, that you work something in the earth, that that you get to work. I I, I get it. There's a there's a belief and a thought that you just got saved for heaven, that God just saved you so you can go to heaven, and when you get to heaven, you're gonna real, live your best life. Some people they don't want to hear living my best life. They're gonna like, when I get to heaven, that's when I'm gonna live my best life down here. Here is just crazy. I hear you, but truth be told, God wants you to start producing fruit now. He doesn't wait. He's not waiting for you to die and go to heaven. Nope. The moment you got saved, you got eternal life, and the moment you got eternal life, Jesus says, "I want you to start." bearing fruit. Right now, you are not just existing. If anybody is here and you are just existing, you are not living the Christian life. The Christian life is adventurous. The Christian life is exciting. The Christian life is a life of producing, of making something happen. There is theology out there. There are, there are thoughts and systems of religion that says, hey man, God does everything. You don't do a thing. You already know how I feel about that. I can show you through the word that there is a connection between heaven and earth. Their heaven has a part. We have a part that we are working in union with Christ and your job is to produce. You have producing power. Don't ever let anybody undermine or overlook the gift that God gave you. I don't care if it's a cooking gift, an administration gift, if it's a, a fitness or health gift, whatever the gift is, whatever the way your mind works, that mind can produce a genius quality about you. That mind can walk you into doors that you never experienced. My wife recently, she was at a, a school meeting with one of for, for my four-year-old daughter, and in the school meeting for my daughter, they started saying some of the stuff that my daughter, my four-year-old needed to work on. They didn't feel like she could point out, you know, the, the states as clear enough. I know she's only four, but they want her pointing out states. You know, I, I can't point out states, but they want my four-year-old to point out the states and the countries and the continent, and they're saying, and then they, they said, my wife was telling me that they said, you know, oh, she has she has great art scores, or her art scores are through the roof. I mean, they, they're just, it's unbelievable, but but we need to work on this process and stuff. And I asked my wife, I said, did they, did they say it like that? She said, yeah. I said, they say it just like that? She said, yeah. I said, yeah. That's never going to happen again because I don't want anybody overlooking. You're not going to just brush aside that she's a genius at this part and then point out the part that she may not have it all together on this part because truth be told, if our schools are through the roof, that might be the thing that makes her a million dollars. That might be the thing that changes her entire life. So no, we're not going to brush aside that she has creativity. We're not going to brush aside that she has an animated type of thought. We're not going to brush that aside. I'm not going to let you do that. Why? Because that could be my greatness. Why? That could be my producing power. And many of you have power to produce wealth, but some teacher or some counselor told you to ignore the thing that you do really well. So you stopped it when you was five and you stopped it when you was nine. And God said, no, you need to pick that thing back up. Why? Because I gave you that for a reason. And just because they don't know what to do with it don't mean I don't know what to do with it. So I'm here to tell you that you are here to produce. You are here to make stuff happen. And Jesus says, I don't want you just to produce any type of fruit. I want you to produce fruit that will last. Fruit that will last. I'm not interested in fruit that's here for a day and going tomorrow. I'm not interested in fruit that's hot right now and then forgotten later. I'm not interested in fruit that's here and then disappears. Nope. I'm looking for you to produce fruit and fruit. That will last, that will remain, that will stay. The moment he talks about fruit that remains, he's talking about legacy. Everybody say legacy. What is legacy? When we talk about legacy, a legacy is something that is passed down. It is your mark. It is your footprint in the earth. It is your contribution to the world. Your legacy is something that is passed down. It is your mark. It is your footprint in the earth. It is your contribution 
to the world. God wants you living for legacy. He wants you thinking the big picture. He wants you thinking long term. That God wants you making decisions with legacy in mind. Legacy is so powerful because you can do something today that lives forever. Let me say that again. You can do something today that has an impact forever. Very familiar story. I think the story is relevant for today. You've heard it before. But there's the daughter who's with the mom and they're in the kitchen and they're cooking and mom is making a pot roast and so and so mom cuts the ends of the pot roast and the little girl says mommy why do you cut the ends of the pot roast I don't understand she said I don't know why I do that I see my mother do it and that's why I do it so they called the mama they called grandma and they said grandma hey why do you cut the ends of the pot roast we don't know why you did it she said well I saw my mother do it I don't know why I did it now think about it I just saw my mother do it and that's why I do it so they called great grandma they got daughter they got mother got grandma they called great grandma they say great grandma we have a question why did you cut the ends of the pot roast uh, before you put it in the oven we don't we don't understand she said well I cut the ends of the pot pot roast because in that day I didn't have enough money to afford a pan that was big enough for the pot roast. So I had to cut the end so it could fit in the pan. Now I don't know why you fools keep doing it, but I would suggest you go to the store and buy yourself a bigger pan. Well, what happened? Legacy happened. Somebody saw somebody do something, and God is saying that's the type of impact you are going to have. That's the type of power you are going to have that when you make a move, that, that when you do something, you are actually going to be creating a legacy. You are actually going to be leaving a mark. This is a life that is so important for you. This is a time that's so important because God wants you to think legacy. It's the idea that you are on a beach, and you're walking through the sand, and then you turn around, and you're saying, Oh, I can see where I've walked. It's the idea that you stop and you looked at your tracks and your tracks have been made in the sand. You're saying, wow, I didn't know that I could walk that far. Wow, I didn't know that's how long I came from. Wow, I can see my footprint. God wants you to look at your life even today and say, I see my footprint. Wow, I see my impact. Wow, I see the things that he's had me to do. You got to live for legacy. Now, somebody in the room saying, Pastor, I didn't come here for this. I came here for Jesus. I, I just want to hear about Jesus. And why can't we just talk about Jesus? I, let's talk about the cross. Let's talk about this is church. Why are we talking about legacy? Well, I'm talking about legacy because I think Jesus talked about legacy. Jesus said that he wants you. Jesus said that he wants you to have fruit that will last. In the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16, Jesus says in the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glory. Glorify your Father in heaven. Let me say that again. Jesus says in Matthew 5, verse 16, he says, he says, let your light shine. He, God said, I want you to live a life that's loud. He, see, I have to teach this because I was taught, I know there are people who are saying, I know people are saying, hey, hey, you don't see me, just see Jesus. There are some of you who are not on Facebook because you don't want nobody to see you. You want them to see Jesus. There are some of you, your profile picture is Jesus. You on Instagram, and then when they pick, click, your name is Jesus. Somebody say, why don't you change that picture? I just want you to see Jesus. I, I get it. I know where the teaching came from because we don't want people to be prideful. We don't want extreme narcissism where it's all about you. But at the same time, that's not what Jesus taught. Jesus says, no, nope, I need people to see your light shine. I need them to see your good deeds. I need them to see your marriage. I need them to see your parenting. I need them to see you getting out of debt. I need, you, I need them to see you overcoming obstacles. I need them to see you pray. I need them to see you worship. Why? He said, because I'm going to impact you so much that when your light shines before men and they see your good deeds, they're going to start to give God praise in heaven. So do me a favor. Change your profile pic. Take the blonde hair Jesus off. Put your face back on and let God shine through your life. People need to see you praying. They need to see you reading your word. Yep, they need to see what it looks like to be laid off. They need to see what it looks like to see, have a loved one die. Jesus put you in the earth to let life happen to you in front of others so they can see you and say, that got to be God. Stop hiding. Stop hiding. Stop being so quiet. Stop, stop, stop letting nobody, nobody can see you. Nobody can be around you. Nobody is experiencing the favor of God on your life because you won't share your story. You won't testify. You won't say anything. I get it. We took away testimony from the church because some of y'all started testifying in ways that were too crazy. So we don't give you the mic no more. But you still got a testimony. You still got a life to live. Let your light shine so that men can see the God in you. This is about legacy. Everybody say legacy. 
I get it, somebody saying, Pastor, I hear you. That's so cute, good word, uh, but this is not my Sunday. I'm so sorry. Uh, I just, I, I don't care about legacy. I'm single. I don't care about legacy. I don't have no kids. I don't care about legacy. My family never cared about me. I don't care about them. Uh, uh, my life is my own. I don't, why do I need to even think about legacy? Well, here's the thing I have to say to you. The thing you need to know is this. You are leaving a legacy whether you want to or not. Everybody in this room is going to leave a legacy. The question is, are you going to be intentional about the legacy you're leaving? Are you actually going to be intentional or are you just going to let anything be passed down, anything be given to others on your behalf? Don't let it be so. It's like this weekend, this past weekend, I went out to go preach. And when I went to go preach, I went into a city and I rented a car. And I rented a car. When I went to the uh, rental car, they said, go, down, go downstairs in the garage. You can grab any car. When I went down there, there were only two cars. There was one car that looked like it wouldn't make it past Monday. And then there was another car. So I went to this car. But when I got into the car, the car smelled like cigarette smoke. And I, I was in a rush. I said, let me get up out of here. And uh, anybody who's rented a car, I've rented a car with cigarette smoke before. I didn't think much of it because I've had to endure it. And uh, anybody knows you sit in a car long enough that has cigarette smoke, you start getting a headache, you start, your nose start hurting, you almost can be in it until you get so desensitized, you don't even know what's happening to you. And, and so I, I took off with the car because, you know, I'm just like, hey, you know, I'm, let me get out of here. And so I'm driving the car for a couple of days. When I bring the car back, drop off the keys, they say, hey, you have any problems with the car? I said, no problems with the car. They said, all right, cool. I leave. And uh, they said, they, I, I looked on, on my email and they billed me $350. Now, I obviously didn't want to spend a lot of money. That's why I went to the section that only had two cars. So obviously, I was trying to get a cheap car. Okay, but, but I said, hey, I had to go down there and say, hey, how are you going to charge me? I've never smoked a day in my life. They said, sorry, sir, you brought the car back smelling like cigarettes. I said, no, I didn't bring the car back smelling like cigarettes. Y'all brought me a car that smelled like cigarettes. They said, no, all we know is that you brought us a car with cigarettes, so you have to pay the price. Can I tell you something? That is a picture of many of our lives. Some of us lived a life that stunk so bad. And many of you are paying a price for a life that you didn't live, but somebody lived before you, and they handed you down a name or a life that stunk so bad that now you got to pay forever for it. And I'm here to let you know, stop giving people this dirty, nasty, stinky life. Why don't you build a legacy so when somebody gets into the car of your life, they want to say thank you instead of, I can't believe what you did to me. Everybody in here can admit that it is awful to pay a price for something. Everybody here has struggled with an addiction that's not yours. It was an addiction that your family didn't deal with. It was an addiction that your father just overlooked. And so it got passed down to you. And now you're struggling with this addiction. But truthfully, if you track the addiction, your father had it and your grandfather had it and your great-grandmother had it and your whole family had it. And because they didn't deal with it, because they weren't thinking legacy, now you're driving in a car that you got to pay for. And God is saying, the buck stops here, that, that this is it. I I put you in the earth because you're about to stop some stuff. I know people who went to go buy a house. And when they went to go buy a house, they saw their credit report. And the credit score was so jacked up. And when they saw the report, they realized that mama had gave out their social security number to the whole family. And everybody done rented stuff and didn't pay back. And everybody had electric bills and cell phones that don't even exist no more. Why? Because somebody didn't care about legacy and they handed you a bill. And now you can't walk in Canaan, not because of your issues, but because of some issues that were passed down. God forbid you are sitting in this place saying, I don't care about legacy. You need to care about it because somebody's got to live in the life you have. You are passing something down whether you want to or not. So, 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 so here's the deal. I want to give you four things you need to know to leave a legacy. Four things that you need, four things you're going to have to know if you're going to leave a legacy. Four things you need to know if you're going to leave a legacy. This sermon's for you. If I'm talking to you, can you wave at me just so I know I'm in the right room and I heard from the Lord? All right, good, good, good. All right. Four things you need to know if you're going to leave or live, leave a legacy. Uh, number one, legacy is built now, but experienced later. Legacy is built now, but experienced later. If you are going to leave a legacy, you got to start building now. I'm talking to college students, okay? Don't, don't wait. Oh, when I graduate, four years, I'm just going to live it up. Ah! And then when I graduate, when I graduate, I'm going to be free. I'm going to get serious about my life. Can I tell you something? I know 40-year-olds who are living under the consequence of things they did from 18 to 22. 
and they thought that when they left school that they left the issue, not realizing that the issue followed them all the way into their adulthood. I'm telling you that right now you are a builder. Right now you have to start building your life now. You got to start building credit now. You got to start building your finances now. You got to think like a farmer. A farmer thinks sowing. I'm sowing seeds, realizing that I'm not going to reap this until later. This is hard because I am the microwave generation. I am the fast food generation. When I think biscuit, I think Pillsbury. When I think waffle, I think Lego my ego. When I think pizza, I think Elio's, blah, 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 blah. Y'all don't know nothing about that. Y'all be 35 or over. When I think macaroni and cheese, I think Kraft. I think Velveeta. And anybody in this room, if you've ever experienced a real biscuit, a biscuit that had flour, a biscuit that had water, a biscuit that had TLC, 10 the loving care. When you've had a real biscuit, you realize that Pillsbury has been selling you chemicals in a can. You can eat 20 Pillsbury biscuits and be fine. Eat one of mama's biscuits and you took a nap. Why? Because there's the most powerful things in the world take time. Legacy takes time. Stop trying to get legacy now. You got to live. This is why it's difficult for some of us to get life insurance because we can't imagine paying for a bill for some money we ain't never going to see. Life insurance. I'm about to give them $25 a month so that somebody else can get, I got to die to get my million. Yes. Yes. Forget that. I don't need that. Yes, you do need that. <laughs> you got you to gotta build. You got to build now and experience the harvest later. See, what ends up happening is when a farmer, see, a harvest don't shock a farmer. Harvest don't shock a farmer. When a, when a farmer sees harvest, it's like, yep, because you sow seed, you sow seed, you sow seed. Before you know it, you just stumble on a blessing. And, and then you walk into another blessing. And then you walk into another blessing. And everybody else is saying you're lucky. Everybody else is saying, well, I can't believe that happened to you. Not the farmer. The farmer saying, I'm not lucky. I know why this happened to me. It's because in December, I walked into some blessings because in January, I was sowing some seed. When y'all was playing around, I was sowing seed. When y'all was arguing, I was sowing seed. When y'all was up in court, I was sowing seed. So don't get mad now because I'm bumping in a blessing everywhere I go. It is not an accident. I planned for this thing. Not every harvest has to surprise you. There's some harvest you can say, yep, I sowed that and I expected it and I planned for this. Everybody say, build now. Experience it later. It reminds me when I was in middle school. When I was in middle school, there were two types of people. There was cool people and nerds. It got quiet. Because this room might be full of one of the groups. So I'm playing. <laughs> Ask your neighbor, say, which one are you? Say, which one were you? Say, which one were you? Say, which one are you? I, I was one of the cool people. I was one of the cool kids. And when I was with the cool kids, we, we, we made fun of the nerds, man. We get on a school bus, we slap a nerd in the head like, Psh, we already know you did your homework. You know what I'm saying? Psh, we know you're ready for this test. You know what I'm saying? Psh, we know the teacher's going to ask you to answer the question. Psh, you always going to the board answering some questions. <laughs> we skip school. We skip school, and we look out the window, and we call the nerds like, hey, hey, nerds. We out this school. We going to get some pizza. And we, I mean, we would just make so much fun until award day, <laughs> a.k.a. Revenge of the Nerds Day. <laughs> because it would be like a huge banquet, and, and cameras are there, and parents are there, and everybody's dressed up, and the mayor walked on in, and the governor's there, and we're sitting there like, ooh, something big is happening today. This is about to be unbelievable. And then the mayor gets up, and a perfect attendance and a $350 scholarship goes to little Johnny. Johnny, come on up here. And $1,000 scholarship for, for our school spirit. All A's. Come on, $1,000 in cash right here. Hey, and going to a trip to Disneyland. You and all of 
your family is the one with all the honor rolls. Come on up here, little Susie. And all the cool people are like, we didn't do nothing. This is crazy. And all the nerds are like, yeah, you like me now. How you like me now? You, you was laughing yesterday, but you ain't laughing today. Can I tell you something? There may be people in your life who laugh at the way you pray and laugh at the way you worship and laugh at you coming to church and laugh at you giving. And you say, you know what? You might laugh right now, but a war day's coming. And the day he calls my name, the, the day my harvest comes in, you're going to wish you were praying when I was praying. You're going to wish you was giving when I was giving. You was going to wish you had been in church. And guess what? Even if I leave this earth without my award day here, when I get to heaven, Jesus is going to say good and faithful servant. He's going to say well done. And when I get to heaven, I'm not going to think about all the people that laugh. I'm going to think about the legacy I left and the seeds that I sown. You got to live for legacy. Second thing you need to know, second thing you need to know is you need to know that your last name is bigger than your first name. Your last name is bigger than your first name. I don't care how you got your name, but you need to be living for your last name. Your first name is about you, but your last name is about us. And unfortunately, we have too many people who are living. It would be, it would be wrong of me to live for Brian and not live for Bullock. So, so I'm just going to take care of Brian. But I'm not going to do nothing for Bullock. I don't care how I got my last name. I don't, I don't care how I feel about it. This is my name. And I'm telling you, if you're going to think legacy, you have to think in, you got to think in, in last name. Some people say that, that's not really biblical. Yeah, yeah. We can, if you look all through Proverbs, it'll tell you about the power of a good name. Even God says, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I am a God of generation. I'm a God of family line. I'm a God of inheritance. I'm not just a God of Abraham. I'm the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. Their names matter. You need to be living for your last name. I, I, I did a study one time, and in the study it talked about the difference uh, between, between rich people and wealthy people. They say rich people think about money, but wealthy people think about legacy. They say rich people think about money, but wealthy people think about legacy. Let me tell you why, why wealthy people think about legacy. I did a study, and I studied all the organizations that were last names. Can I give you the list? I said, can I give you the list? It's, ex it's extensive, but, I, but and it, I don't have every one. There's more than this. But let me just give you a few. McDonald's is a last name. Abercrombie and Fitch, last names. Armani is a last name. Baskin Robbins is a last name. Chrysler is a last name. Fisher Price, Gucci, Hennessy, Harley Davidson, Hilton, Honda, Kohl's, Kraft Foods, Lowe's Movie Theater, Marriott is a last name. Maybach is a last name. Nordstrom is a last name. Pillsbury is a last name. Porsche is a last name. Procter and Gamble, two last names. Rolls Royce, Charles Rolls, Henry Royce, last names. Turner Broadcast System, Ted Turner, last name. Versace, last name. Wells Fargo, Henry Wells, William Fargo, last name. Walgreens, last name. Wrigley's, last name. Welch's Grape Juice, last name. Here you are, you think you're buying a product. You are not buying a product, you're buying a name. You think you're wearing a product. Hey, look at this product. No, you're saying look at this family. And what you don't know is while you're making every family rich, you're making yourself broke. So you don't went to one family called Wells Fargo and got $200,000 so you can go to another family called Rolls Royce so you can give them money to get yourself a car so you can go back to the hood and see the Joneses and say, look at what I, what I got. Meanwhile, Wells Fargo, their family's sitting up being rich and Harley Davidson's and Rolls Royce are being rich and the Joneses are sitting there holding up people's stuff saying, look at what we did and we broke. Push somebody and say, he's talking to you right now. I don't know if you're listening but he's talking to you. Look at my bag. Look at him. Versace, Versace, Versace. Yeah, be quiet. You're saying somebody's family. That's a, that's a name. That is not a product. It is not a bag. Gucci, Gucci, yep, Gucci, Gucci. Yep, you broke. And Gucci is Gucci. They good. They Gucci. 
in the movie, The Founder, in the movie, The Founder, it's a great movie. It's a movie about how Ray Kroc, uh, uh, some people say swindled, some people say swindled the McDonald's brothers out of their business. If you, if you don't know the story, uh, the, the, the McDonald's is not owned by the McDonald's family. It's owned by a man named Ray Kroc and the Kroc family. And so you need to do research. But in the movie, and one of the scenes in the movie, they say he swindled them. One of the scenes in the movie, he got them to sell. It's based on a true story. He got them to sell them the business. At the end, when they signed the contract, he asked them, he said, hey, do you know why I wanted your organization? Do you know why I wanted your business? They said, yeah, because we have the best burgers anywhere. He said, no, your burgers are all right. I, I can, I, I've had better burgers. It's not your burgers. And they said, well, it must be our system, our fast food. We get it out so fast. He said, no, I can improve on that. And then he said, wow, you really don't know your power. He said, I wanted your name. He said, because right now there's Burger King, Burger Joint, Burger Boy, Burger Prince, but you all are McDonald's. You all are an American name. If I just put McDonald's, I can sell salad, apple pie, fries, because everybody wants to be a part of the name. What if I told you that your blessing is attached to your name? That part of the reason why you're not wealthy yet is because you keep trying to make Yolanda wealthy. You keep trying to make Tasha wealthy. What if you made Johnson's wealthy? What if you started thinking about your kids? What if you started thinking about your legacy? What if God started dropping Canaan and opening up windows of heaven? Because now you're not just thinking about you. You're thinking kingdom. Legacy. There's power in your name. Power in your name. When my son was born, before my son was born, Pastor Andy called me. He said, what are you going to name your son? I said, I don't know. I'm going to name him one of these names. He said, why not give him your name? I said, I don't want to give him my name. I, I just said it I just said it like that. I don't want to give him my name. Why won't you want to give your son your name? I said, I, I don't want no juniors. I don't need no juniors. Little did I know I had some issues with my name. I had some father issues. I, I had some family issues. I, don't, I think at, at that moment I started thinking, man, do I have some issues, some stuff? I hadn't worked out some stuff I hadn't healed from. And Pastor Andy said, do me a favor. While you're working on yourself, Give your son your name because you're going to want to leave your legacy in the earth. That's exactly what he said to me. I gave my son my name. I gave him my name. My son's name is Brian Bullock. I walked through the door this morning. It's so funny. I walked through the door, and he's just singing. Bruce was there. He started singing, and he said, look, Brian Bullock over there singing. Everybody said, Brian Bullock over there singing. Brian Bullock ain't singing, but Brian Bullock is still singing. Why? Because I'm thinking legacy. There are some people who are attached to you who are saying, Mama, can you do something with this name? There, there, there are some people who are saying, Dad, can you do something with this name. Maybe God gave you the name to change and reverse some of the stuff that the name meant one day. I wish there was somebody in this room that say my name might mean one thing right now, but I promise after today, this name's getting ready to change. I promise after today, everybody's gonna want my last name. I promise, oh, 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 I wish there was a woman up in here who said I'm about to make my name so big that my husband's gonna beg me, can you just keep your name? I wish I could just take your name. Because why? You, God has given you a name to build legacy from. I hear her husband saying, I don't think so. I don't, I don't, I'm not feeling that, Pastor. You took it too far. <laughs> Number three, <laughs> what you make happen for others has greater impact than what you make happen for yourself. What you make happen for others has greater impact than what you make happen for yourself. The value you give others will increase your own value. Many of you don't like how much you make, not realizing that what you make is based on the value you bring to the table. And if you want more money, you got to bring more value. Many of you don't like what you make, but you really need to not like what you bring to the table. If you want to change your salary, you got to change what you bring, because what you make happen for others increases what happens to you. It has greater impact. If you want to make real impact, you have to give what you have to someone else. When I was younger, I remember my grandfather always bringing me, when he went to go preach, he said, grandson, come with me. We're gonna go, I'm going to go preach. You're coming with me. And I'd be like, grandpa, but I want to play Nintendo. I want to do the Genesis. I want to do, and he's like, nope, come on, you come with me. I would go to my grandfather. We'd go preach. And every time he'd go preach, he'd have me, he'd say, uh, uh, we're going to have a song before I preach. And uh, uh, my grandson's coming up to sing a song. He had never told me a word. I'm sitting there saying, oh, who's singing? He'd be like, oh, my grandson, Brian. I'm like, oh, God. 
My grandfather used to make me go to rehearsal, always in rehearsal. You come to rehearsal, you need to rehearse. I'm like, but Grandpa, I want to go do the, the. No, no, you're going to come to rehearsal. My grandfather, he's old school. He's old school. He didn't ask. He's not worried about nothing. He's not worried about your feelings. He's like, come on, you, you coming. I'm like, but Grandpa, I don't want to go. You coming to rehearsal all this time in rehearsal. My grandfather making me, he, my grandfather made me direct the choir one time. The choir director forgot to come to church. <laughs> he said, grandson, get up there and direct the choir. I'm like, <laughs> I don't know what to do. What do you want me to do? Uh, yep, yep, just do it, just like that. <laughs> and he used to make me sing this song. He used to make me sing this song. I sing because I'm happy and I sing because I'm free God on your side is all I just saw Brian Bug singing. That's not all you saw. You saw George Bullock Sr., my grandfather who's 85 years old today. You saw his legacy. Because no matter if he's here in Boston, or if he's in North Carolina, or if he's in Atlanta, as long as I'm in the earth and I'm singing that song, his legacy got to still live. And my question to you is, why are you holding on to your anointing? Why are you holding on to your power? Why are you holding on to your knowledge? God is saying you need to get that thing out of your spirit. God is saying you need to get that thing out of your mouth. You need to teach your children. You need to teach your family. You need to let that thing go, because I'm trying to get legacy in the earth. Why are you the only one who knows how to make that apple pie everybody love? Why, why are you the only one who knows how? So you mean to tell me, can't nobody else make that sweet potato pie recipe but you? So, so you're going to just die, and you're not going to tell nobody what the secret was. <laughs> Even Colonel Sanders left his secret. Now, come on now. Even Colonel Sanders said, y'all make some good chicken, but when I'm gone, y'all going to keep making it. What I'm saying to you is, why is it that you're the only one, so you own all this real estate, and you didn't share that with nobody? You're not going to tell nobody how to do that? You're the only successful marriage in your family. You're not going to tell nobody? You're going you're gonna, to you're gonna hoard this information so you can be the only one who wins. You have lost. You have lost. You have lost. And I'm telling you that you are going to have to look at your life and recognize that everything you are doing right now is having major and great impact. Every one of your decisions, everything that you are doing, you are having impact in the life that you have right now. Can I tell you something, what you're doing and not, not realizing it? When you're holding and hoarding the impact, hoarding and holding some of the information that you have, you are, there are two things you're either doing in the earth. You are, every decision you make, you are either perpetuating a curse or breaking one. The reason why you cannot hold on to that information is because there's some curses that need to be broken, and they cannot be broken until you share what you have. 
Pastor, how can a recipe of apple pie, that can't do nothing for nobody. That's just a recipe for an apple pie. How many of you can admit that you have had experiences where you went to grandmama's house or you went to your mother's house and you were sad and then you started eating some of that apple pie or some of that sweet potato pie and all of a sudden a smile came on your face and you started feeling better? Anybody? Is that the only one? That wasn't the food. There was something that was in her spirit when she made it. And even though she's passing down a recipe, she's really passing down a secret. And the real secret is that the spirit behind this thing. And so now there's some people in your family who's battling with depression because they're waiting for you to open up your kitchen and let people come in and taste your fried chicken. And it's going to put a smile on their face that coming up here and laying hands is not going to do. What if your knowledge is the secret to the wealth for your family? What if, what if, what if, what if I'm not going to be a millionaire, even though I will be? But what if I'm not? What if, what if it's my son? What if my son's about to hit the millions? Then guess what? Brian Bullock done made it. <laughs> Both Brian Bullocks. I'm going to be right there. <laughs> hey, son. We... What I'm telling you is everybody say pass it down. You got to pass down an information. Stop going in the secret prayer. I get it. God wants you to pray in your prayer closet. Sometimes come out the closet and let everybody see you pray. Because you're going to realize your children are going to do the same thing. I get it. Stop being secretive. Stop being so. No, you got to pass this information on. You got to tell people how to get this thing done. You have this incredible ability to sell. And so you have people in your family who are using it the wrong way, and they're using it to be manipulative. You got to hold them in and say, hey, guys, you know how to sell. You know how to sell. You know how to sell. Can I tell you something? Oh, I can't believe I'm about to say this. But there are some people in your family that sell weed. And they sell it great. Becca, yeah, you on that corner. I need you on that corner. I need you to give me my money by 5 o'clock. Then I need you to give me my money at 6 o'clock. And I need you to go pick that up. I need you to go. So they need you to go pull them in and say, hey. Yo, Jamal, I can teach you how to use that leadership gift, how to use that marketing ability, and take it away from the enemy and bring it into the kingdom and say, if you give me a shot, I can show you how to flip this thing the right way and make money for the rest of your life and not go to jail because of it. I'm here to let you know you are a curse breaker. You are not just getting married. You're breaking a curse. You are not just graduating from college. You're breaking a curse. You are not just getting out of high school. You're breaking a curse. You are not just saved. You're breaking a curse. And everybody around you is about to be blessed because of what God's getting ready to do in your life. I don't know what my name meant before I got here, but I know what's going to be before I leave. You got a legacy. You got a legacy, and it's time to pass it on. All right, musicians, you can come. Let me get to my fourth point, and then we're out of here. The last point is this. You got to remember how you started, but focus on how you finish. If you're going to leave a legacy, you're going to have to remember how you started, but focus on how you finish. I don't want you to forget how you started. I don't want you to forget that father wasn't there. I don't want you to forget some of the conditions that you were raised in. I don't want you to forget some of the rejection and some of the pain. No, I absolutely, I want you to remember how you started. But do not for one second let it dictate how you're going to finish. There's somebody in this room saying, Pastor, I don't understand. I, I hear you, but, but this sermon got me all messed up. I came, I, I was feeling good. And then you done preached this sermon, and now I'm thinking about the 60 years of my life I've wasted. I'm thinking about the 60 years of hurt I caused. I'm thinking about the 60 years of stuff I did. I got some college student who's sitting here saying, Pastor, I wish I heard this word in my junior year in high school. I wish I heard this word in my sophomore year in high school because I did some stuff as a sophomore that I'm still paying for now. I did some stuff as a senior that I'm still paying for now. Can I tell you something? Your yesterday may have been jacked up, but God knows how to take the old and make it new. I came to preach to somebody today and let you know your first 60 years was jacked up but your next 60 days God says I will turn it into such impact I will give it such greatness that you won't even remember some of the stuff that you jacked up oh Pastor Al said it he said you reap what you sow and I believe that scripture because it's true but how many people can shout over the fact that you know there was some stuff that you sow that you have yet to reap that there was some stuff that God blocked how many people can admit that you look at your kids and you realize you 
weren't that great of a parent, but your kids still came out all right. Is there anybody here that realized I wasn't a great student, but somehow I got my PhD? Is there anybody that can admit, you know what, I eat a lot, but somehow I'm still thinning and in fitness? Why? Because there's some things that God said I blocked it. I stopped it because I'm protecting your legacy even when you're not thinking about it. I wish I had somebody in the room that can give God praise for the stuff he forgave. Give God praise for the stuff he overlooked. Give God praise for the stuff he forgotten. God said, yep, your first 50 years was crazy, but I done wiped that out, and I'm about to honor your next 50 years. Yep, your first 20 years was out of whack. You was hanging out with everybody. Wasn't thinking a minute, but your next 20 years, I'm getting ready to breathe on. I'm getting ready to bless and anoint. Yep, all your childhoods were jacked up. Yep, nothing went right for you, but God is saying, I'm getting ready to open up the windows of heaven, and I'm about to pour out blessing, and the blessing's going to be legacy. The blessing is going to be an inheritance. God said, don't worry about what you're going to pass down because what I'm about to do, he said, anybody who remains in me and I remain in him, you've got to bear fruit and that fruit's got to last. I know your first uh, years of your life, you weren't necessarily, you weren't necessarily connected to the vine, but Jesus says today, I'm about to intertwine myself with your spirit. I'm about to intertwine myself with your life and from this day forward, your mama is not your vine. Your father is not your vine. Your auntie and him is not your vine. Now I am your vine. And because I am your vine, you are now my branch. And everything that you bear has got to be good fruit. And that fruit got to last. I wish I had somebody in this room with just a little bit of a memory to remember your crazy years that you haven't paid for. Remember your stupid years that you haven't paid for. Remember your wilding out years that you haven't paid for. How is it you was wilding out like that and your kids are still healthy? Your kids are still saved. Your kids are still walking up right. It's because God stepped in the way of some of those seeds that you sowed and he said, I'll let you reap this one, but I'm not going to make you reap that one because this one's going to mess up too much stuff. I wish I had somebody in this place to open up your mouth and say, God, I bless you for what you're about to do. God, I thank you for what you're getting ready to do because this next move I'm about to make is about to have a lasting impact. This is the year 2019 that when I move, it's going to hurt my children. When I move, it's going to help my family. When I move, it's going to help my neighbors. When I move, it's going to help my friends. When I move, it's going to help my spouse. When I move, it's going to help my grandbabies. Is there anybody in this place that said, God, make a major impact in me. Let every time I worship, let it be a resounding symbol. Let my praise be passed down. Let my worship and my shout be passed down. Let my dance go to the nations. Let it go from generation to generation to generation. All oh, right now, I can feel myself getting worked up because I can see my son in my mind. I can see my daughter in my mind. And I got news for my seed. I want my seed to know that daddy's going to praise God. Daddy's going to pray. Daddy's going to hang in there. Daddy's going to keep his hands up. Daddy's going to keep his head up because I refuse to let them walk into the mess that my mama gave and the demons that my daddy had and the stuff that was in the people before me. No, from this day forward, my name's getting ready to be blessed. My seed's getting ready to be blessed. I wish you high five everybody around you and say I pray blessing on your life. You're blessed. You're blessed. The fact that you're connected to the vine, it means you're blessed. Blessed in the city. Blessed in the field. Blessed when you come in. Blessed when you go out. Children blessed. Family blessed. Your neighbors are blessed. Street is blessed. I tell you to look down your road and say the fact that I'm on this road, it means road is going to be blessed. Legacy coming to everybody. I break everybody's curse. I don't care. I don't care. I got enough power. I got enough praise. I got enough anointing. I got enough grace to take care of me and everybody else around me. See, there's some people who are not praising because you're saying, I don't see it yet. I don't see it yet, Pastor. I don't see it yet. But we are crazy people. We are so crazy that we don't have to see it in order to praise for it. Because, because, because it takes immature people who only shout when the battle's over. That's easy. It's easy to get the deed and shout for. It's easy to win the race and then shout for. But is there any crazy folk that say, I believe the word of God so much. I don't have to wait till the battle's over. I can shout right now. 
I don't have this tea yet, but I praise you because I know if I remain in you and you remain in me, I can ask whatever I wish and that thing has got to be done for me. Oh yeah, you said I didn't pick you, you picked me and you picked me to bear fruit. You picked me to produce. You picked me to have impact. That's why you picked me. You picked me because I got a power that can't nobody else see. Can I get somebody in the room that says I'm not waiting till I have it, but I'm going to shout for what I'm about to get. Give them an advanced praise. I dare you to praise him for 2020. I dare you to praise him for 2022. I dare you to praise him for 2050. You might say, Pastor, I don't know if I'm going to be here 2050. He said, if you got a legacy, he said, it don't make a difference. I'm going to breathe on your name. Yeah. He said, I'm about to breathe on your name. Oh, push your neighbor and say, you better put some respect on my name. Yeah. Yeah. Push your neighbor and say, put some respect on my name. Yeah. 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 Don't say my name lightly. Oh, God. Because when you say my name, angels move. Yeah. When you say my name, God steps up. When you say my name, my name got power. My name got legacy. Tell somebody put some respect on it. Put some respect on it. Because this name's going to be a name that's going to last in the earth. This name is going to be a name that's going to be full of the kingdom. This name's going to be a name that's remembered for righteousness. That's remembered for holiness. That's remembered for Jesus living. Oh, yeah. Listen, I need you to know this. Your life is not a whisper. Listen to me. Your life is not a whisper. Jesus said a crazy statement. He said it to a group of people who thought they were religious and smart. He said in Exodus... God says, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Can I tell you something? When God said that, they were dead. But he said, I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And then Jesus says, he is not the God of the dead. He is the God of the living. If he were talking about a dead person, he would say, I was the God of Abraham. I was the God of Isaac. I was the God of Jacob. But he didn't say I was. He said I am. Because he said, you may not see them on the earth, but I can see them standing before me in heaven right now. And God is saying, your legacy about to be so strong. Everything dead is coming back to life. And even if you're not here, he says, I am the God of Michelle. And I am the God of Jacob. And I am the God of Trey. And I am the God of Asher. And I am the God of Evan. I am the God. Meaning that legacy is so strong. Even when you don't see them, they're still here. I want to talk to somebody who you've been living in a cave. A cave of shame because things that are attached to your name that you don't like. You have been hidden. And Jesus saying, no one, you have, he said, let your light shine. He said, you are the light of the world. Why would I take a light and put something over it so the light can't be seen? Why would I do that? In a world of darkness, you the light. But I'm gonna put you, I'm gonna put a bowl over you so can't nobody know you have a light. That's foolishness. He says, you cannot be hidden. You cannot be hidden, brother. You cannot be hidden, sister. You cannot be hidden. You can't. Your life is not a whisper, it is a roar. When you walked onto the earth, the earth responded to you. When you were born, God
God said, ooh, not oops. When you were born, God said, ooh. He didn't say, oops, I messed up. I don't know what I was thinking. No, he knew exactly what he was thinking. He knew exactly what he was thinking. He knew exactly what he was thinking. He was thinking legacy. And I want to pray for you. Because you have a legacy you're going to leave in this earth. That legacy is going to be. I'm not talking about when you die. I'm talking about now. I'm talking about babies you're going to see. Copying stuff you do. Now. I'm talking about people, your daughter's cooking like you. They want to cook like you. They want to act like you. Why? Because you have a legacy and you're going to see it now. I'm not talking about when you did. Pastor Brian is talking about now. You're going to see legacy now. You're going to see people following you now. You're going to see people copying you and mimicking you now. You're going to see your impact. You're going to see your shadow everywhere you go. You're going to see your imprint everywhere you go. I remember I used to bring a brown paper bag. My wife used to make me a brown paper bag. We were paying off debt. And so we, didn't, we, didn't, we said we're not going to give out no fast food. She used to give me a brown paper bag to the office. Every time I brought that brown paper bag to the office, everybody made fun of me. You got that brown paper bag. You look so stupid. And then one day, these, these are all coming to the office. These are all have their fast food. And I used to take out these sandwiches my wife used to make. And they was like the best looking sandwiches in the world. And, uh, and uh, they would be like, one day they was like, ooh, what's that? Ooh, that looks good. And then before you know it, they used to come in. And uh, they used to be like, what'd your wife make you today? And I used to be like, I don't know, let's see. And I open up the bag and they'd be like, wow, she's great. And uh, then they started realizing how much money they were spending on the food. And here I came with my bag lunch and, and they broke and the food was making them take a nap after work. And, and, and my, my food was giving me life. And it was like, ooh. And before you know it, I used to come in and people started coming in one by one with a brown paper bag. And we'd all come in like, ooh, what'd you make? Ooh, I don't know what she, ooh, I don't know what you, what happened? Legacy happened. Legacy happened. Can you stay in it long enough to watch the legacy happen? Can you be laughed at long enough to watch legacy happen? Can you be faithful long enough to see that thing turn around and watch legacy happen? Woo! Good God. This is rich. This is good. This is good. 